What's going on guys? Got another comic book haul video for you. I uh, picked all these books up for 50 cents each. They were doing a sale over at uh, Pops Comics here in Louisville. Um, they were trying to just clear out a bunch of their old stock. Uh, that's my normal LCS I go for for new books and I picked through their back issues and dollar books a lot over the past couple years. So uh, it was nice to see them just try to blow out their stock with these uh, 50 cent books. Uh, they brought uh, in a whole bunch of extra boxes that they normally only take to the flea market. So that was nice to see. And then they added a couple more. Not a whole lot of new inventory, but hopefully they sold enough so they can start uh, adding some more. Um, so this first book was a Ninja Turtles parody, obviously. Mildly microwaved prepubescent kung fu gophers. And the cool thing about this one, I didn't notice it until I looked at it uh, on the inside uh, and saw who the cover artist was. It's Phil Foglio. His uh, signature is down there. Uh, and this guy definitely is drawn in the style of Phil Foglio. He was a, uh, a magic artist. That's how he came to came onto my radar. And uh, he does comic books. He, uh, he still Him and his wife still do a book um, that they publish online. It's like a webcomic. And then they do... Um, collected editions of that that they uh, have that you can buy print versions but this one was from 1986 so this is pretty early in his career uh so this was a nice surprise to see um i didn't know it was him when i got it but i like the picking up these ninja turtle parodies so for 50 cents it was pretty cool pickup next we've got a mass effect free comic book day book this is kind of the five or six page origin story of how Joker becomes the pilot of the Normandy. That's Joker there on the cover. Uh, Mass Effect was a favorite video game of mine from the Xbox 360 days. I must have played through that thing the first one probably seven or eight times. I played through the second one a couple times and played through the third one I think twice. Um, so I'm starting to pick up the, the comics anytime I see them. I hadn't seen this one before. Uh, so again, for 50 cents, it was an easy pickup. The interesting thing about this is a flip book. So if you're out looking and you see this free comic book day on the other side, the R.I.P.D. and Killjoys, I guess there's a story about each of those in there. So um, just be aware of that. And like I said, the, the Mass Effect story is only about three or four pages. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, these next ones are picked up the movie adaptation of Free Jack. So this was a three-part series. There's number one, number two, and number three. So that was kind of cool. This was one of those uh, terrible 90s sci-fi movies I'd never seen before, actually. I watched it last night. It's on HBO. Um, it does not hold up at all. It was probably not good when it came out either, but it's just a fun, you know, sci-fi campy movie. It's got uh, Emilio Estevez, Rene Russo, and Anthony Hopkins. I remember seeing the, the trailer for it, you know, a hundred times when I was a kid. I think it was on one of the the movies that we had on VHS, and, um, the preview at least. So I remember seeing the preview, you know, a bunch of times whenever we watched whatever movie it was in front of, but I never actually saw the movie until last night. So it's, uh, it's funny because it takes place... It was made in 1991, 1992, and it takes place in 2009. So, of course, it's always fun to go back and look at how the uh, the 90s thought the 2000s were going to be. And there's there's not quite flying cars, but there are, you know, it's post-apocalyptic. The ozone layer is, you know, poisoned the atmosphere, or the, the depletion of the ozone layer has poisoned the atmosphere, so everybody's sick. So rich people have to go back in time and grab, you know, healthy people from the 90s, like Emilio Estevez, who was a race car driver, uh, bring him back into 2009 and download their consciousness, basically, into the healthy bodies from the past. So, you know, not much of a <laughs> convoluted story there or anything. Uh, it's actually got, that's Mick Jagger. He was in it, too. He was kind of the, the villain. Um, so that was interesting. He's wearing a a helicopter helmet for the most for most of the movie um so that was weird but you know just kind of a fun adaptation the painted covers look kind of cool uh there is a point in the movie where Emilio Estevez is wearing a cowboy hat and a duster so he kind of looks like his Billy the Kid character 
from the Young Guns movie. And then it's also got uh, Buster Poindexter in there. He's Emilio Estevez's friend. Um, the guy's real name is David Johansson. Um, so he's very 80s and 90s. So, of course, he had to make an appearance in that as well. So, anyway, just fun comics to pick up. Just weird movie adaptations. Uh, next, we've got Counter-Strike number one. This is the Wizard World Chicago Con exclusive, limited to a thousand copies, it says on the cover there. So this is from August of 2000. And I wasn't sure if this had anything to do with the, the video game Counter-Strike or not. It does not, um, but I picked it up anyway. Just, you know, it was 50 cents. This is like a, a spy story, not anything to do with uh, counterterrorism or, you know, shooting bad guys on teams and trying to set off bombs or anything. But, you know... Again, for 50 cents, why not? Speaking of painted covers, we've got this one. It's uh, Summer Special Contractors. This is kind of a cool uh, 80s eclipse book with a bunch of uh, anthropomorphic characters in it. We've got a uh, rabbit, some... can't tell if there's turtles on there or not. Maybe, but pig. Some Just some furry space animals that are, you know doing furry fun space things so grab that next we got another ninja turtles parody these are the cold-blooded chameleon commandos uh, this is michael kelly cover not a phil foglio unfortunately but still just a fun ninja turtles parody so why not this one is invincible red sonia number six this is the frank cho sketch cover this one was one of the newer books that I picked up, but they had a bunch of those, like, recent back issues, I guess, from, I guess nothing, I don't know how new this is, within the last year or two, I think, so, um, nothing brand new was super cheap, but, um, again, just for 50 cents, I'm a Frank Cho fan, so I'll pick that up. Next, we've got Cable Number 6, this is a Liefeld variant, he's homaging himself, <clears throat> excuse me from it's a New Mutants 87 homage, obviously, with a ape version of all the characters. I'm not sure what's going on, if that has anything to do with the story, or if it's just like some weird variant theme that Marvel was doing this particular month, like with a cross-promotion for a Planet of the Apes event, or apes, was there a Marvel apes zombies, maybe, I think? Maybe I've seen books like that, so maybe this had something to do with that, maybe not. But, yeah, I like Liefeld, so I just thought this was kind of a funny homage cover. Uh, next, we've got Cable number 5. This is a Mark Silvestri variant. So, I guess when this one came out, it was, it's was it got a $25 price sticker on it. So, I think it's a 1 in 25 variant. I'm not sure. Um, but, again, this was only 50 cents. It's kind of a cool, I guess it's kind of like a Terminator homage with Cable on there. So... I uh, like Silvestri, and, you know, just like seeing him do uh, Marvel stuff like he did in his old X-Men days, so this is more modern, so I like to pick that stuff up, too. Alright, next couple of cartoon books here. We got Ren and Stimpy Show, number five. It's a newsstand. And Ren and Stimpy Show, number 24, also a newsstand. Not in the best shape, but, you know, I love the Ren and Stimpy Show cartoon when I was a kid, and I uh, just like picking these up. I still need to find the first one that's got the uh, scratch and sniff cover, so I'll keep an eye out for that one of it, um, definitely. Next, you got Ultimate Power number eight. This is just that uh, nine issue miniseries that I'm trying to collect. Greg Land did uh, the covers and the pencils on the interior, so I'm just trying to put that collection together. I read the first couple issues a couple weeks ago. It's pretty cool. It's kind of um, story. Those first couple issues are uh, Mr. Fantastic kind of uh, messes up the multiverse by trying to get collect information to save uh, his buddy Ben Grimm, and then he gets kind of put on trial for that. So that was kind of cool. Um, anxious to see where the story goes. I think I only had the first three issues and this issue number eight right now. So can't read them all quite yet, but I'm looking forward to finishing that up when I can. Next, we've got the the Cow special from Spring-Summer 2001. This was a 
kind of an interview slash preview book that uh, Top Cow put out, kind of a promotional thing. You got a, a Witchblade pin up on the inside, and then there's like a six or seven page Witchblade story, and then there's just interviews with some of the Top Cow creators, and so kind of the like trailers coming soon stuff for Top Cow around this time. So it's kind of interesting to see what they were doing back then. Next, we got another fun indie book. This is Space Beaver, number one. Is it number one? Yeah, book one. <laughs> I've never seen this before. Uh, it just looks, it's not quite a Ninja Turtles ripoff, but, you know, it's just more anthropomorphic animals in space in that same vein of the, um, what was it, that contractor's book that I showed, that I just showed. So I just like the, the cartoon style, kind of the, the painted covers and just weird indie books from that era. Next, we got Silver Surfer 14. Uh, I just noticed this is a Mike Magnolia cover, so that's kind of cool. I'm um, just picking this up as run filler. I think I've almost got 1 through 50 complete for this Volume 3 of Silver Surfer from the uh, 80s and 90s, so um, really happy about that. Next, we got Wolverine Origins number 3. Just picked this one up because it's a Joe Casada cover. I think he did a bunch of the covers on this uh, Wolverine Origins run. I'm not too sure, but um, he was one of my favorite artists back in the uh, 80s and 90s. So anytime I see him do stuff, I know he's like the editor in chief of Marvel now, but I don't know. He doesn't do a lot of uh, actual artwork anymore except for the occasional like, variant cover. So anytime I see something that he does, uh, I'll, I'll generally pick it up. Another Wolverine book here. This is a Greg Land cover, uh, homaging a classic Jim Steranko uh, Shield book. Uh, instead of Nick Fury on the cover there, we've got Wolverine. Well, Nick Fury's there, I guess, but Wolverine is standing in for Nick Fury on that original cover. So I thought that was cool. I like Steranko. I like Greg Land. I like Wolverine. So, you know, can't go wrong with that. Another Wolverine book here. This is from the Volume 1, his first ongoing series. This is issue 53. It's a nice Mark Silvestri cover. Um, got Mojo on there too. His uh, Space Dreadlocks. So it's always nice to see. More X-Men here. We've got X-Men Annual. I think this was from 2007. 2006, 2007 maybe. Um, Picked this one up just because it's a Mark Brooks cover, and Mark Brooks did the interior pencils for the whole thing as well. So um, I was happy to get that. Got uh, Rogue and Mystique on there, and then I think that might be I don't know who these twins are. North Star maybe, and uh, oh, I can't remember the other one from Alpha Flight, or it could be something completely different. I'm not sure. Um, more X Men books. Yeah, X Men '92. I picked up a run of these just because of the um, with the animated series coming back. Uh, I'm not sure if what all is going to have uh, value. These don't have any value right now, um, but they might eventually just because they've got cool David Nakayama covers. I think this was some of his early work. He didn't do the interiors; he just did the covers. But I think he did pretty much all the covers on this first this first run. So there's number five, number six. These are almost like a, an anime style, so that's kind of interesting. Oh, this one's fun. It's got uh, number seven, and then it's got the Toadies. <laughs> Jubilee's holding a Toadies album, which is funny. I just noticed that guest starring the Toadies. I'll have to open this one up and see if the Toadies are actually in there. I saw them live back in the 90s. Uh, they put on a pretty good show. Uh, let's see, number eight. I think these these might be all newsstands too. I just noticed that too. That's interesting. Uh, I like this Rogue cover. It's uh, this one's definitely anime inspired, kind of uh, maybe even like a Street Fighter. Just Rogue doing a super uppercut against Gladiator there. Um, is that Gladiator or Guardian? I don't know. One of those guys. But that was cool. Number nine. Got uh, Apocalypse here. And then some dude in Apocalypse's mouth is getting gross. But again, just a fun David Nakayama cover. And here's number 10. That's the last one I have. 
Uh, so that was cool. A nice little run there. I'm not sure how long this run lasted. Maybe like 15 issues. But uh, I'll pick up all the Nakayama covers I like, or that I can find. I like his his style. So now just a couple more here. We've got X Men Legends number one. This is a more recent book. Uh, this is kind of going back and filling in some gaps between those old 80s and 90s X Men stories. This one uh, is a Brett Booth. Uh, he actually did the pencils on the inside, which was really cool. Uh, the first two or three issues of this X-Men Legends run he did, it tells a story of uh, there's Havoc and Cyclops and their other brother. Um, I can't remember his name. Um, X-Man guy? I don't know. Um, but it tells a story of, of them finding out they have another brother, so that's kind of cool. And we've got another one, X-Men Legends 8. This was the, this is a Scott Williams variant cover. Uh, it's not a ratio or anything. It was open order. But I didn't. I just had the regular version number 8 when it came out. So uh, when I saw this Scott Williams variant for cheap, I uh, grabbed it. This one's kind of cool. This was 6, I think 6, 7, and 8 or 7, 8, and 9. There's a little three-issue run here with uh, Wolverine, Omega Red, Lady Deathstrike, and Jubilee. There's a little story with them uh, that was pretty cool. So I was happy to find that. And then last book here, we've got X-Men the Movie Special number one. I've seen the um, X-Men movie specials with the photo covers from the, that first X-Men movie back in 2001 or 2000. Um, I haven't picked any of those up, but this was the first one I'd seen with actual uh, artwork on it, so that was cool. It's got, I'm not sure why the Wizards of the Coast logo is on there. They, they're obviously the company that um, makes Magic the Gathering, so I don't know what they had to do with the X-Men movie uh, when it came out, or with specifically with this comic book. Maybe it came with toys or something, because I know Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast, so this might have been like a a movie toy comic insert or something not sure but it looked pretty cool it's got the uh they're in their outfits from the movie you can see Sabretooth and wolverine magneto and weirdo toad on there and mystique so it's kind of cool uh the art style is very much from the the 90s um, so i was happy to find that and then uh i think that is gonna do it guys so hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon